Hi everybody, I'm Juanona Judd and I will be talking about the Judd's final tour. You're obviously someone who has an incredible career with many high notes. Uh, 19 number one songs, 20 million records sold, uh, played for six presidents and the Pope. Uh, <laughs> if there is a high note, as you look back right now, what is one that stands out to you the most? Okay, so I'm in front of about 20,000 people and I'm trying so hard to be as entertaining as I possibly can because I know that there are people out in the audience that have no idea who I am prior to that particular show. And I look down and there's a 16-year-old girl with an LP, a record. And I stopped the entire show so that I could sign that girl's album because I knew that it was a moment that she would never forget. And I just signed it in front of everybody because I thought real life is more important in that moment. Let's move on to the Judd's final tour. What did it mean to kind of like let the cameras into such a, a vulnerable and, and crazy time in your life? What was that decision like for you? I don't know if it was the right decision. I don't know because I'm so emotional and so spiritual, uh, spiritually driven that I just absolutely wanted to share my story with people and let them see the cracks in my armor because that's how the light gets out. And I wanted people to know that none of this is easy. Um, even on a good day, uh, there are so many variables that you are dealing with. I just said, I'm gonna show up, show out. I'm gonna let them see the stuff that happens in real time because I think people are curious to know what it's like. And yet, I struggle. And I wanted people to not see that part and yet that's part of the game. So I had to sign up for all of it. And here it is. So the tour obviously featured the biggest names of women in country music, Martina McBride, Kelsey Ballerini, Little Big Town, Brandi Carlisle, Faith Hill, the list goes on. It seemed like you barely had to ask for those people to join you. Like, what did it mean to have that sort of unconditional support immediately, right? Um, I cried a lot. I think when you feel that loved, and that connected, uh, it's the greatest part of what I do, okay? Besides the love from the fans that happens, which is just intoxicating. Faith Hill was one of the first ones to show up and say, I'm here, what does she need? And I'm gonna do whatever I can. And it blew my mind because everybody's busy. We all have a lot going on. And for people to stop their bus and say, what can I do was overwhelming. And I went with it. It's, it's like your birthday when you walk in and everybody's there and it's a surprise and you're just completely intoxicated with all the love and the joy and the giving and the... You just have to stand there and receive. And it's hard to receive sometimes for me because I'm a giver. And to take that in and, and process all of it, it, uh, it took me months after I got home to really unpack everything and see what a gift it really was. What's sort of the big takeaway that you had at the end of the, of the tour? <sighs> wow, that makes me emotional. I think that when you're going through hell, uh, you gotta look for something to hold on to. And whether it's people or you love something so much you wanna do it because it helps you carry on through all the pain, uh, this tour gave me purpose, so I have a saying from pain to purpose. I literally went from my mother's memorial to the stage, literally. It felt like it was just days apart. And when you go through something so debilitating that it just takes your breath, it literally takes your breath away. Trying to find my voice in all of that was one of the most incredibly difficult things I have ever had to do is find my voice through the tears. Realizing my mother is gone and the way that she left is something that I'll never get over and you have to walk through it and when you wake up in hell you just keep on walking and somehow by the grace of God you will find your way and that's what all of it taught me. 
What's it like to work so closely and collaborate with your husband? Ooh. He's obviously a, a member of the band, but it seems like he's also such a good, like, creative collaborator to work with. Okay, we had our 11th anniversary yesterday. Oh, and, congratulations. Uh, yes, congratulations, thank you. Being married to Cactus Mosier is, um, well, he wears a t-shirt that says, I'm the oldest teenager in the band, because that's the truth. He is 66 years old, however, that's just a number, because on the flip side of that, he is the youngest, most childlike person I have ever known in my life. And on a really good day, that is the most joyful thing in the world. On a day where I'm trying very hard to be professional and do my hair and lips, um, it's much like dealing with a toddler uh, who's banging on the pots and pans. He's the loudest, most noisy person in the universe, and I love him so much that he's taught me how to be joyful and to appreciate and be grateful. What kind of advice would you give to uh, an up and coming artist within the industry? You know, I try not to give advice. I try to share my story with people because they're gonna pick and choose what they're gonna do. And I know that my advice can only go so far. I literally just say, okay, this is what I did and it didn't work. So I would say also, if I'm gonna say one thing to somebody that seems like advice, that would be, Literally, never let them tell you who you are, ever. And listen to your gut in spite of all the facts and figures. Listen to your inner voice because sometimes it's screaming no and you're ready to say yes and sign on the dotted line. Follow your gut. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and check out more videos right here on the official CMA YouTube channel. You guys are good? Can you, can you edit? <laughs> they can edit, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are capable of that? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get some stills too. Yep.